but doesn't mean to admire someone the most. Admiring means to look up to or respect the person. The person that I admire the most is my mother. She's a warm and friendly person who loves me. There are three reasons that I pick my mother. <laughs> uh, first, she's an emotionally strong and loving person. Second, she gives me a lot of support. Third, my mother has given me a perfect education. First of all, she is an emotionally strong and loving person. When I feel sad, distressed, dreadful, she comforts me every time. Being emotionally strong helps a lot. When I was sick, she cared me for days and days. I admire my mother because she gives me love all the time. Secondly, she gives me lots of support. She gives me support when I think about giving up. For example, I had difficult time for the musical acting and she gave me accomplishments and gave me Confidence. I think she gave me 100% of her effort and support on me. Third, my mother has given me a perfect education throughout my life. When I was 8 years old, uh, she began homeschooling me at first. At first, I thought that was very boring things to do, but now I see that it actually helped me throughout my life. Throughout every educational chance from my mother, I learned to not give up and try again and again. What does it mean to admire someone the most? To me, it means to respect the person. In conclusion, I have learned many goods from my mother. Um, she has given me lots of love. And I learned that even though it is difficult, do not give up. I am Lois Lee. Thank you. Computers, mobile phone, and tablet PCs. These are devices that can never be missing in our life. We can search anything we want, watch anything we want work with anything we want, and play anything we want. But what makes these appear is not a fancy design or fancy, uh, accessories. The important parts are softwares. There is, but there is one more level that creates and edits softwares. You could probably guess this right. Yes, it is programming languages. But I have a question here. Who made the most primary and basic programming languages? Yes, who is who I, he is who I admire the most, Dan Schrich. Now, let me talk about why I admire him the most. Dan Schrich had made gigantic impact since the seed was released. Sounds pretty simple, right? As simple as it sounds, he actually created it simply as well. C uses English, I, C uses simple English words and supports all platforms so many users can easily access. But the most important point is that C is an open source. Uh, this means anyone can edit and make programming languages based on C. These programming languages can be easily handle, handled by amateurs. Also, C has changed most of people's life. People use C to create operating system, which is OS. Unix was the first open OS in the world to be written in C. Since then, more company has created OS based on Unix. Other than Windows, most of them, like Mac OS, iOS, Android, and Linux, is all based on Unix. These OS have been embedded in Computers, mobile phones, and tablet PCs. What does it mean? To, what does it mean to admire someone? It means to respect someone or looking up to someone. I admire my brother, Micah, the most. He's my oldest brother, and I also have a second brother, and his name is Caleb. I want to talk about why do I admire Micah the most, and when is it difficult to admire Micah? And lastly, why do I want to be like him? When you have brothers, I think you can have empathies. The oldest brother, my God, is my protector. When I hug him, it feels like a cozy room. We laugh together, help each other, play games, and talk together. My friends like him too. My God is in college right now, and even though he has a class, he still attacks him and me. Sometimes he helps me to feel better, if, and he understands my feelings. I am so happy that he's my brother. When he was a high schooler, I didn't care about him and I didn't miss him. But when he went to college, I missed him and I missed him. I have a lot of good memories of him. 
It can be difficult to admire him sometimes because we are brothers. Everyone has a fight with their brothers. That's normal in brother's life. Usually we fight about game or food. He nags me sometimes. That's the part that I hate him or don't admire him. But uh, he's much bigger than me, so when I fight, I lose. But that includes in a good memory. He, uh, why do I want to be like him? He lived in America, but when he was in the first grade, he went to Korea for mission work with my family. He didn't like his school because his friend didn't like him and he got bullied by friend and also his friend hit him. And he was bad at Korean and they, they asked, why do you live here? Go back to your town. You're American. He had angerness in his heart, but he didn't tell our parents neither. Our family live in a one small room. And one year, one year later, uh, he went to China with my family for missionary. He was so confused with the language because he needed to learn English and Korean and Chinese. The Chinese teacher didn't like him, and the teacher said that he should test for ADHD too. I think they were not the best teacher. He had a hard life, and through this hard life, he endured everything. So even though he, we have a hard time, we can endure it together and we can have a happy life. I'm really proud of my brother. Now he has a good friend and he, has, he is having a good life. I'm so happy that he's that is my brother. I admire my God the most. Thank you. Among them, I would like to introduce the person who created Korean language, Kun Min Jung, which you today. Hello, my name is Stephanie Lee and I will introduce King Sejong. I admire King Sejong because he strengthened Korean military, developed science, technology, and agriculture, and created hunger. First, King Sejong was an effective military planner. He created several military regulations to make kingdom strong and safe, and supported the advancement of Korean military technology, including the cannon development. Second, during Joseon Dynasty, King Sejong had a big influence on the science. He wanted, us, wanted to assist the farmers, so he decided to make a guidebook for farmers. Dongsak Tiksar contains all the information about farming techniques for different regions. This book was used, used for farming and it was very helpful for, farm, for, helpful for farmers to plant crops. Prominent inventor Tang yang was a smart and creative thinker as a young person. However, he was the bottom of the social class, but King Sejong noticed that he was a good inventor and gave Tang yang the opportunity to make inventions under him. Tang yang created significant designs for water clocks, a military, spe a military spheres, and sundials. Third, today we use Korean in Korea or else we cannot converse with each other. King Sejong profoundly affected Korean history with his personal creation and introduction of Hangul. Hangul is also called as Hunmin Jongam and it has 28 letters. Hangul was completed at 1443 and published in 1446 with 33 pages. Hangul can be memorized in a few days and studied for several hours already helps to pronounce Hangul. These are the reasons that why I admire King Sejong. In Korean history, Sejong is the second best king after his father, Taejong. I admire King Sejong because he strengthened the Korean military, developed science, technology, and agriculture, and created hunger. Thank you. Many parents scold their children for playing game too much. Parents do it because the parents think uh, gaming is a waste of time for their children. However, that is only half um, true as gaming can make you exercise and make you smarter. Um, when you play a fair amount of time, you can burn calories and get smarter. When you cross the line, uh, the, then the mobile games can make you lose focus in what you need to do and can slowly kill your brain cells. Mobile games can give great impact in your life. Mobile games are not to blame. It may be about yourself and your inability to manage your addictions. Parents can also help to overcome the addiction of mobile games. Did you know the game that was created, created on July 6, uh, uh, 2016? It is called Pokemon Go. At that time, everybody loved it. Elementary, middle school, high school, and also adults. It was very popular as this get impacted and have a positive response. When you play Pokemon Go, you have to move around in, in, that, po uh, in that certain location you can catch Pokemons. Uh, the reason why Pokemon Go can be posit uh, positive is because it makes you exercise and makes your body uh, move. 
and also helps people who are bad at reading map to practice. However, the negative uh, impact of mobile game is you might lessen your sight ability. When you try to look at something at a close range, it sometimes hurts your eyes. It is the same as playing games on your phone because phone screens are uh, small compared to TVs or tablets. Uh, the bigger it is, the farther you are watching and saving your eyesight. But the closer it is, uh, more, uh, the more your eyesight gets worse. But we cannot judge anyone for playing game. It is their choice. Just let them be because you, don't, you do, do not know when he or she is getting influenced by a mobile game. Um, it is their lifestyle if they choose to get impacted by a mobile game or not. But inside a mobile game, there's, uh, there are many influences and viruses that can go inside people. I have always heard this phrase from my parents. Reading a book is better than wasting your time on mobile games. If you can get into a good college while playing mobile games, go ahead. But if you think you can't, start reading now. It's now or never. Thank you. So, you're in your room playing with your phone. And your mom comes in. And I'm like, hi, mom. And your mom is like, stop playing with your phone and study for once. I bet all children on their phones might have heard something like this from their parents. But have you ever asked the questions, is mobile games really that bad? I did. Many parents and adults only see the negative sides of mobile games. And many children tend to see only the positive sides. I want to talk about both sides. Beneficial mobile games exist. For example, a game called Piano Tiles have actually helped me adapt to different kinds of rhythmic music and also helped me to it also helped me recognize notes faster. Another example is chessboard games and mobile version. It has been proved scientifically that these kinds of mobile games help the human brain develop more efficiently. Mobile games can help the brain development of people. Another positive impact of mobile games is getting rid of stress. South Korea, as you know, has many academies. These academies and their homework give a lot of stress to children. In fact, South Korea's stress rate caused by studying is the highest in the world. The problem that causes most stress to students are related to academies. These, this shows that stress release is necessary for many people, since so people could even commit suicide because of it. Mobile games have been scientifically proven to help develop emotional awarenesses and it helps to release stress. Now for the negative impacts. As we all know, mobile games are a serious distraction to other important things in life. One of my friends got his first smartphone recently. He always had a good report card, good, good report card, good test scores, and good grades. That was, the mobile phone was his present from his mom because of grades. But then right, the semester right after he got his new phone, can you get what happened? His grades all draped straight down. So even though the mobile games can give straightforward positive impacts, it can also give it can also give negative effects towards things that now in the future. Mobile games can also create emotional illnesses and issues. Some people who play too much mobile games find it hard to tell the real and technological world apart. These people sometimes even damage other people's lives without any reason because they think that they might think that, that Oh, they can just respond or they can just start a new game. By the time they figure out that it's not the tech world, but the real world, it is too late. People can also learn violence from violent video games. These, these, can, learn to, these can lead to bullying and abuse in school. Yes. Of the 7.5 billion people around the world, about 6 billion people own a cell phone. Also, of those 6 billion people, about 3 billion people play mobile games. I see that as a problem because according to research, about only 51%, which is 3.8 billion people, are properly educated around the world. I am not saying that mobile games are only bad. I am also not saying that they are only good. What I want to say is that I hope people will remember the importance of both mobile games and important choices to be made in the real world with humanity. Thank you. Have you played a mobile game? You probably have once in your life because you probably have while doing something or doing it to spend time or past time. So in 2017 alone, there was 2.8 billion people playing games actively. That is a third of the entire world's population. And 
When people think of games, some people only think of the bad things. But others also think the only good things and that people should actually play games. But you must think of both of them. Better brain functions and encouraging fitness are some of the positive effects of games. But also you also must think that negative effects like less productivity and social interaction can also occur. So, Many games like puzzles and thinking games can improve our brain functions. Like, you can improve your memory formation, spatial navigation, and strategic planning. Researchers say that gamers actually have more gray matter in your brain. Gray matter is a region that actually helps muscle control, vision, memory, memory and decision making and self-control. Some adults or other people may even feel that gaming is just a waste of time and you're not getting anything from it. But actually you are getting things. You're getting better brain functions using games. So this can actually help us remember more, plan more strategically, and have a better sensory perception skills. Also, today there are more augmented reality games, like Pokemon Go. So not only will we give our brain a workout, we'll also give our body a workout. So even if this is not a hardcore exercise, we are still moving around. We're still exploring the outside world, and we are still interacting with the outside and burning off calories, rather than just sitting around in bed all day. So this is also, that, like, Pokemon Go and those type of games are not the only way to improve our lifestyle. There's also games like dieting games. So these games you may not have heard of, but you actually have a diet that the game gives you, and if you break that diet, you actually need to pay money to the other players in the game. So this can help us maintain a healthier lifestyle because we're always going to be on our phone, and this will always remind us to have a healthier lifestyle. So I've been telling you about the positive effects. So you may think you want better brain functions and a healthier lifestyle. So you might think, oh, then we should all play games. But actually, there are also negative effects. So games are actually a huge distraction in our lives. And this can decrease our productivity. So people play games, are, they're playing games so much that they're not realizing their surroundings. People have actually died from playing Pokemon Go for going to places they're not allowed to and are not paying attention. So also, we also get really distracted easily. So one second, we're just checking our phone just to check on the game. And a few minutes later, we're at ending up playing for hours and hours, and we're getting less sleep. Not only are we getting less sleep, we're actually losing time in our life to do something as productive like studying and doing our homework. So these, this is one of the negative effects. Another one is that People like us right now, we have been born with phones around us, so it's hard to imagine and live a life without phones. But that's a problem because today, now, instead of interacting pe with people face to face, we're now doing it through our phones. And we, people should interact with people face to face and not be sunk, sucked into the game world. And I also think that when people do socialize with other people, we do it through social media and games. So. The negative part about this is we are being sucked into this not like this fake reality without even realizing it and losing our social skills. So as you can tell, there are positive and negative effects of mobile games. But you also must think about positive effects don't always apply to all games because you don't need to exercise and diet just to play Fortnite or Battlegrounds. Also, the same thing with negative effects. But all we know now is the number of gamers and players will rise. So. You may think that we should blame the game makers and the games for making us have bad effects. But actually, it's not their fault. We are the ones who choose to download these games and actually choose to play it. So technically, it is our choice whether to get the good effects like brain, better brain functions and exercise, or we can choose to actually have the bad effects like having less productivity and social interaction. So. In conclusion, it is our choice to choose whether we do the right thing for us or the bad thing for us. Thank you. Did you know that over 2 billion people have mobile games on their phones? There are 2.5 billion cell phone users around the world. Now, if we magically removed mobile games, there will be both positive and negative impacts. Mobile games have a mainly positive impact because it brings people together and improves cognitive ability. However, you must control the quality and more importantly, the quantity of time spent playing mobile games. Playing mobile games are statistically around half of the time we use being on our phones. 
It can be argued that mobile games have more of a negative effect because of less human interaction in person, but, it, but mobile games can bring people together through user interaction. With, and you can meet a larger variety of people more conveniently through mobile games. Another positive impact coupled with mobile games is that mobile games can positively influence cognitive ability. A scientific study from Massachusetts General Hospital shows that people who consistently play video games or mobile games have more gray matter in parts of their brain responsible for fine motor skills and strategic planning. Another study from Nottingham Trent University found that fast-paced games enhance lear learning and data retention. Children also benefit from mobile games in the classroom and educators are starting to use it as a tool to educate children. The downside of mobile games is that it is laughably easy to become addicted to mobile games. Internet addiction is considered a mental health disorder and it can lead to disastrous consequences. People have died from playing video games for days on end and internet addictions cause death and we must be careful enough to avoid it. Another unwanted effect of playing mobile games is that people will spend copious amount of money playing playing mobile games, all for virtual in-game items that have no real-life value. One must be very careful not to spend too much time playing video games and must be very careful with the types of games they play. There are many mobile game-related deaths and injuries every year. For example, we can take Pokemon Go as an example. There are people that have died while not paying attention to as technology develops and mobile industries expand, mobile games have become a very important part of life in modern society. Many people, including young kids, play mobile games. Since mobile games are now a very broad subject between people, it has great a uh, great effect on human beings and human life. I think mobile games have both positive and negative impact. First, science proves that mobile games are good for your brain. Mobile games help you to improve basic skills that are needed in normal life. Uh, for example, mobile games increase your problem-solving skills and intensify concentration and improve better decision-making skills. Mobile games require using brain and skills that are also necessary for other things. Secondly, in modern society, uh, Many people live busily without resting. For those people, mobile games can be a place to find fun and have leisure enjoyment. By playing mobile games, you can be out of reality for a moment and enjoy your time. However, being away from reality can be dangerous. People are usually distracted by mobile games from their environment or other important things. Some people were killed by accidents uh, crossing the streets with their eyes on monitor. S since mobile phones or devices are easy to carry around. Many people can get injured by concentrating on games, not on their surroundings. So mobile games can be fatal if you play it in dangerous situation. Second, many people get addicted to mobile games and have difficulty managing time. So, so it is hard to use time when it comes to sleeping. Mobile phones often release blue light, which makes it even harder to fall asleep. If you have difficulty sleeping, it affects your health. Uh, especially when students or children use mobile devices late at night, it will disturb them from growing because of lack of sleep. To conclude, mobile games can help people but also disturb people in their daily life. Mobile games increases your skills that are essential for practical situations. Games can also be, uh, games can also be a good resting place and provide relaxation for people. Uh, however, not being in reality can be dangerous when people focus on mobile games rather than reality. People often get addicted to mobile games which lead them to poor time management and lack of sleep. Because of these reasons, I think mobile games have both positive and negative impact for people. Thank you. Did you know mobile games now account for 51% of global revenues in the gaming industry, followed by PC games 24% and console games 25%. As the mobile games account for more than half of gaming industry, attention to the impact of mobile games has increased. There are positive impacts and negative impacts of mobile games and I could not tell only one of the impacts because both of them go together. Positive impacts include that people can use it as an entertainment and for motivation. 
Negative impacts include addiction and health problems. First of all, mobile games are one of the most convenient ways of entertainment for people. What do you usually do in your free time? According to NPD Group, people spend about three hours every day playing games on their iPhones, Androids and tablets. It's convenient entertainment because you do not need any other materials to play it. You just need your phone and tablet and you can play it without Wi-Fi or data. For these reasons, you can see people playing mobile games on subway and bus. Playing mobile games help people to use their free time or leftover time enjoyable and easily. Second, the feelings that people feel while playing mobile games, for example, accomplishment, satisfaction, excitement, and confidence. Those feelings motivate people can help them focus on their focus on their works. In my case, my brother plays mobile games after he finishes a certain amount of studying. He focuses on his study and tries to finish faster to play games. Like this, proper amount of playing games help people to improve their efficiency. Negatively, if you do not manage your time properly, mobile games can lead to addiction. Because of the advantage of convenience in carrying mobile games, you can play it anywhere and that that means people can play it frequently. I remember there was a commercial for addiction of mobile games that nobody talked with each other and they just played games. I have seen many people playing games in restaurants, cafes and transportations and on the streets. Again, when my brother and his friend met, they just play games. But when their mothers take their phone away, they're bo bored and want to go home because they do not know how to play without phone or mobile games. Like this, mobile addiction also lessens people's social skills. You can play games as long as you carry your phone with you. People usually play games in the same position. When you play mobile games in the same position, you have a comfort to see screen clearly, and while you are watching the screen, the number of time you're blinking, blinking your eyes will reduce and it becomes drier. These were my positive and negative opinions about the impacts of mobile games.